Okay, so I wanted to talk about why are there so many different programming languages, frameworks, tools, and libraries, different services, um, and how do you navigate through that? And how do you navigate through all those thousands of different technologies that are uh, glaring at you to identify which ones to study first and how to view this landscape? Uh, if you are a hiring manager or a recruiter, how do you navigate through all the different technologies to find someone with different skill sets? Do you need to find someone with uh, X, Y, Z and the list given by your hiring manager may be very extensive. Look for someone who has A to Z you know, uh, skill sets in their resume. And how do you navigate through that? And you know, how does it all fit in? So to explain why there are so many different tools and technologies and libraries and keywords that just keep coming out, I wanted to use an analogy to explain that. A good analogy uh, could really be helpful in understanding what may seem like a complex behavior. And I think this analogy uh, can kind of break down what seems to be very complex and confusing in the world to something that's more manageable and understandable. So let's get right to it. Okay, so imagine that you're gonna play this video game. And in this video game, this is how the game works. When you start, there are different types of clans that you can choose from. You can choose to play as a human, or as an elf, or as an orc, or as a troll, or there are different options available. So you pick and say, I'm gonna play as an elf, or I'm gonna play as, an or um, as a troll or human. Once you start, you're level one, and let's say up to level 20, you play the game. You fight monsters, you level up, you learn new skills, and you get to expose yourself to this game world, okay? Now, let's say that once you're at level 20, now you get a transportation device. And if you have played the World of Warcraft or something similar, this is how these games work. Once you leveled up, now you can ride a car or you can, um, you can you know, get a transportation device that's really cool. And there are a lot of different cars and transportation devices that you can choose from. Now, each of the cars and the transportation device, let's say in this game, is unique and only made available for that specific clan. Okay, so humans, if you're a human clan, then you can only drive these cars. But you got lots and lots of different cars to choose from. Okay, not only are there a lot of different cars available. Once, let's say you pick this car A, there are a lot of different accessories that come with that car A. And you can buy all these additional accessories to make your steering wheel a little bit bigger or you know, put a bigger tire, paint the car with a different color, maybe have a different windshield or windshield wiper. I, I don't know why you want a different windshield wiper, but who knows, or you put different, um, different engine that's a little bit more powerful, you can just imagine for each of the car, there could be hundreds, maybe even thousands of accessories if that car is really popular. So in this game world, same thing. Once you're level 20, you're given all these options that's specific to each clan, and you can also buy different accessories to customize that car, okay? All right, let's say that once you're level 30, now you leveled up, and you can create a new accessory for any car you want that belongs to the human clan. So now I can create accessory. I can drive cars and choose accessory. Let's say that you have a lot of fun, you're creating all these accessories and you can create them, let's say, in a day or two. It's not that hard. And people love it. They buy your accessories. They, they, um, they pay you and you make some money in this game world. And they use it to customize their car. <laughs> Again, specific, specific for that client. Let's say that when you're level 50, now you can do something even more incredible. 
which is you can create a new car for humans, right? If you started your game as a human being or as a human client in the, in the game. All right, so now you're level 50. You can create a new car and maybe some of the cars that you drove you didn't like so much, but there were some cars that you really liked. So based on your experience with the different cars that you drove, you create a brand new car. You release it out in the world and you give this car a new name. You call it, let's say, Phoenix. Okay, my this car is called Phoenix, so you release it out in the out in the open world. And people start buying Phoenix, and then some people start creating accessories on top of that, right? Because it becomes very, very popular, right? Other level 50 players also start creating cars. So now, if you look at this big world, how many cars would you see now? The number of cars you would see in this world or a transportation device would go a lot larger and bigger and bigger, right? And on top, accessories would also get large too. All right, so what did I mean with this analogy? Okay, cars are like MVC frameworks. Okay, so for example, if you're using, um, and the clans represent the programming language. So for example, let's say Python, Node, JavaScript, okay, uh, C Sharp, Java, Python, okay. Okay, so when developers first get into the world of development, or software engineering. They have to start their journey picking one language, and that's similar to picking a clan in this, in this game. They may start out with PHP, Python, Node, JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, or Go, or different languages. They enter the world. When they usually go and uh, create applications, they don't have to learn an MVC framework. Uh, MVC framework has basically sets of opinions about how things should be built. You could build things without using an MVC framework, but to be able to build an enterprise level application, you always have to use a framework. So once you once they level up, then they start learning how to use an MVC framework, such as Django or for C sharp .NET Core or .NET MVC for Java, Spring, or others and so forth. Or, or if it is PHP, you might go and learn Laravel, Cake PHP, E, and there are, again, a lot of different MVC frameworks out there. Okay, so they go and they start uh, learning on MVC framework. There are lots and lots of options, uh, just like there are a lot of different cars. But each of these frameworks are specific to that clan because each of these framework was just built using that programming language, okay? For each of the MVC framework, just imagine that there are a lot of different accessories that come on top. For example, with Spring, uh, you can imagine Hibernate as one of the tools that you can use to, do, to add something on top of that car, okay? Uh, top of that framework. So again, there are all these major frameworks and then there are all these accessories. Each of the accessories has a name too, which makes it confusing. There are hundreds uh, different accessories that could be available for the popular frameworks, just like how there are hundreds of accessories available for a popular car. Each of the accessory has a name. Okay. Now, when a software developer reaches a certain point, they can actually create a brand new framework from scratch within days. It's not that hard. Okay. It's all boils down to just the fundamentals of core. Uh, software building blocks, and especially the concept of object-oriented programming. If you're good at that, you can create any of these frameworks or accessories within days. Okay, so now let's look back into this. It is so easy to create a framework like this, right? So you can imagine for each of the language, if there were even just 10 frameworks, and then with each of the framework, if there were 100 accessories, how many, how many buzzwords 
would you be hearing? Basically, 1,000. Well, 1,000 per language. Let's say that there are seven main languages you can use to create web. That would be over 7,000 different technology buzzwords that you would hear. Some of them would be cars. Some of them would be accessories specific to that car. Okay, so now, at a high level, when you think about the world of software, just like the world of Warcraft or this virtual world, ask yourself, is that tool, is that a framework or is it an accessory? If it is an accessory, for which framework is it? Okay, so that's one way to navigate through this. Okay, now what's interesting is the world of software, especially web, has been there for a long time. So in the early days of web development, you only had people who mastered one clan, right? They, because it took maybe 10 years for them to get to level 50 to be able to create a new car. So in the beginning, there weren't that many frameworks. But now, as people leveled up, there are a lot more frameworks available for that language. But not only that, people, after they played as a human, they restarted the game and now played it as an elf. And what happens is very interesting is some of the best cars they've seen that humans drive clan, a human clan drive, they said, you know what? I like some of those philosophies and I'm going to bring that into the elf clan now. Right? You can imagine that happening. Right? Same thing has happened in the software space, especially when it came to web. In the early days of web, there were so many different ways to build things, so many different frameworks, so many different opinions, so many different accessories. Right? There's more now, but in the early days, there were still a lot of different opinions about how things should be done. You build something in PHP, and the frameworks for PHP look very different than frameworks that were made in C Sharp. But now, as the software development in web has really matured, it really has converged, where some of the best practices from one language really got planted in the transformation and the evolution of another um, framework in another language. Okay? Rails, for example, played a key part where they introduced some amazing, amazing practices. Now, Rails is not for beginners, and I highly discourage beginners from learning Ruby as their first language because it does just too many things behind the scene. And my personal opinion is that if you're a beginner, you need to learn the core building blocks of software one by one, do it repetitively. And then once you're so sick of it because it's second nature, then you can learn uh, things like Ruby and Rails, my personal opinion. Okay? But the key thing is that in the software development space, the best practices have really kind of cross-pollinated from one another, and now there are a lot of different similarities. Personal opinion is, if you're creating a car to drive and don't pay too much attention to learning the different accessories, focus on the fundamentals, which is understand the, uh, the frameworks, focus on learning the frameworks. Don't focus so much on learning some of these accessories that look cool, right? Focus on the fundamentals, get up to level 50 as quickly as you can, where you can create a framework from scratch within a few days. Once you reach that mastery, then you can look down and be like, oh, that's an accessory. Oh, that's a framework with that opinion, and I can create it too. Then you will come to the point where you become not only programming language agnostic, but also framework agnostic. And you will come to the point where you can create a framework like Angular from scratch. You can create a framework like React from scratch. You can create Rails, Spring, .NET Core, things like that from scratch. And of course, you know, as the car gets more complex, it will require you more time. But the basic bone of it, you could really do it within days once you reach certain mastery. So I hope this kind of explains why there are so many different frameworks and tools available. Just think back into this game analogy and don't get overwhelmed. Don't get caught up when people say, oh, I heard X, Y, Z, A, B, C, all of these are cool things, right? It, the, it, go, it comes in and out. So as a new software engineer, you got to focus on the fundamentals, regardless of which programming language you start, except, again, I don't recommend you start with Ruby, 
I don't recommend you start with Java or C Sharp either. I think you know those are good languages to do once you learn some of the fundamentals. I think it's more important for you to go and build something using the core building blocks of software. And once you get up to level 20, for example, then you start using a framework, right? And you start adopting some of the philosophies that other developers have created and you get used to it. Once you get to level 30, now you can create your own toolboxes and libraries and put it on GitHub and you know share with other people for them to use. Once you're level 50, congratulations. Go ahead and create a new framework. Okay. And then you know, then go into play the game as a, another client. And you will see the beautiful things that reside within different programming languages and different frameworks. And yes, some of the people who have repeated the cycle just as you have would have adopted some of the best practices and brought it into another language or framework but still you know there may be ways where you can contribute okay again when you go to stack overflow quora and hear all these discussions about which programming language is better or which framework is better which accessory is you know is better just think about the car and the accessory it's basically the same thing as saying which car is the best well, is there one right answer? It depends on your preference. Which accessory is best? Out of 7,000 accessories available in the world, which one is the best, right? Well, it doesn't really matter. You know, once you reach a mastery, right, uh, you will be, you won't care so much about the programming language or the framework specific. Those are conversations that usually people from what level one to 30 talk about. People 30 plus, uh, I don't think they really talk about that much because again, there is a beauty with every single framework, every single library. It reflects the personal opinion of the person who created it, but we gotta learn to respect it and you know not be negative, right? We learn from, oh, you designed it that way because of that. Okay, I see a point there. Okay, and you you take that to heart. You know, don't and also when you're learning some of these frameworks and tools, you might get frustrated with the documentation because maybe the documentation is not clear. Just remember that um, when you're learning how to use these libraries and tools, a lot of that is not really software development. You're just learning how to use someone else's code. Um, so if you don't have strong fundamentals and then you start learning these frameworks, you're gonna get lost and you're gonna be become typist. You're gonna type things without not really knowing what's happening. You really wanna avoid that scenario. You wanna really focus on the fundamentals right not go and drive the car right away learn how to walk and you know do those things pay your dues and then you know really kind of level up step by step and if you do that then all this what seems to be a very complex world will make a lot more sense to you if you're a recruiter this i hope helps you understand how things work sometimes if you look for someone with specific skill set abc you may miss a lot of the people who are level 50 who could have created ABC from scratch within days, right? And out of 7,000 technologies out there, the chance that you will encounter someone who knows three to seven particular accessories that you picked out would be very small, right? So that's why we need to kind of go back higher level on the fundamentals of software. Do they understand the core building blocks of software and how to build things? That's really important. You know, are they level 50 player? Are they able to create an accessory from scratch? Are they level 50 where they can create a new framework from scratch? Those are the more important questions, not do they know ABC? Because you may miss a lot of other great developers who could have easily learned it or created it.